Thank you for choosing Woods Power Grips products to assist in handling your materials safely and efficiently. We've created this quick start guide to assist you in the correct setup and use of your manual rotator tilter model MRT4 DC2 vacuum lifter. This video is not a substitute for the lifter's instructions. Each operator should read and understand the entire instruction manual before using any vacuum lifter. The MRT4 DC2 is delivered in a heavy duty box. This box provides protection for the lifter during transport and storage. Carefully open the box and remove all packing materials. Be sure to keep these materials for later transport and storage. Pull the tilt release lever to disengage the tilt latch and raise the lift bar to the upright position. Attach your hoisting equipment to the lift bail and gently raise the lifter from the box. Never raise the lifter unless the lift bar is in the upright position, otherwise you could damage the lifter. Remove the pad covers and save them for use whenever the lifter is stored. The MRT4 DC2 offers three different pad frame configurations to accommodate different load dimensions and weights. Your instruction manual illustrates these pad placements. To install an extension arm, first remove the collarless hitch pin holding the movable pad mount on the frame. Then remove the vacuum pad from the frame. Insert the extension arm into the frame and use a collarless hitch pin to fasten it securely in place. Find the desired position along the extension arm to reposition the pad mount. Reinsert the collarless hitch pin to fasten the pad mount securely in place. Repeat these steps to configure the vacuum pads as needed to support the load material properly. If you choose the linear frame configuration, loosen the screws on the rotation wear plate and rotate it 30 degrees to keep the frame aligned correctly with the lift bar. Then tighten the screws securely. Connect the battery to the battery charger and vacuum generating system. Insert the battery included for the power loss warning buzzer by pressing the battery holder inward and sliding the battery tray out. Then test the alarm by pressing the battery test switch. Before you put the lifter into service, perform the required inspections and tests as directed in the instruction manual. Before every use, be sure to examine all controls, gauges and indicators for visual damage. Examine the air filters and remove any liquid or other contaminants found inside. The instructions explain how to properly disassemble the filters. Test the battery for an acceptable charge before every lift. If the battery gauge displays less than 50% of capacity, charge the battery fully before operating the lifter. If a battery loses its charge quickly or is unable to maintain a charge for a full work shift, replace it immediately. Make sure the sealing edges of all vacuum pads are in good condition and free of contaminants. Position the lifter on the center of the load material to avoid any unexpected rotation or tilting. Make sure that the vacuum pads make full contact with the surface of the load. Once the lifter is positioned correctly on the load, flip the power switch to the on position. The blue power light will remain lit while the lifter is powered up. The power switch must remain in the on position during the entire lift. Press the apply button. This starts the vacuum pump which draws air from the vacuum pads. The MRT4 DC2 has two vacuum circuits with two pads on each circuit. Each vacuum circuit has its own vacuum gauge, vacuum tank and control valve. If anything affects vacuum in one circuit, the other circuit will continue to maintain vacuum. Both gauges need to be in the green zone to achieve full capacity. After both gauges show vacuum in the green zone, the green vacuum lift light will also turn on to signal that the load can be lifted safely. The vacuum pump will shut off automatically to conserve battery energy and will cycle occasionally to maintain sufficient vacuum for lifting. If the pump cycles more often than once every few minutes or the vacuum lift light turns off, support the load and stop using the lifter right away. Consult the instructions for maintenance information. 
The vacuum gauges must remain visible in order to be monitored throughout the entire lift. If the vacuum level ever falls below 16 inches of mercury, stay clear of the load and, if possible, lower the load safely to the ground. Do not resume normal operation of the lifter until the cause of vacuum loss is fixed. The lifter also features a low vacuum warning buzzer that will sound whenever the vacuum level is below the minimum level. Make sure there is sufficient clearance for the load to tilt without contacting the operator or any nearby objects and keep a firm grip on the control handle. Pull the tilt release lever to disengage the tilt latch. Lift upwards or press downwards on the control handle to tilt the load as desired. The pad frame automatically latches when moved to the vertical position in order to stabilize the load. Make sure there is enough clearance for the load to rotate without contacting the operator or any nearby objects and keep a firm grip on the control handle. Pull the rotation release lever to disengage the rotation latch. Rotation stops are available at each quarter turn. When the desired position is reached, simply let go of the rotation release lever so the rotation latch can re-engage. Make sure the load is fully supported and secure before releasing the vacuum lifter. To remove the vacuum lifter from the load, press the enable and release buttons at the same time. This will cause airflow to reverse and break the vacuum seal. The MRT4DC2 is designed to prevent an accidental release by requiring both buttons to be pressed at the same time. While continuing to hold the enable and release buttons, Carefully raise the lifter until the vacuum pads are clear of the load. When you let go of the buttons, the lifter will automatically return to standby mode to extend battery life. Once your work is complete, flip the power switch to the off position. Using the hoisting equipment, carefully lower the lifter onto appropriate supports. Do not set the lifter down on any surfaces that would soil or damage the vacuum pads. When the lifter is stable, detach the hoisting equipment from the lift bale. To transport or store the lifter, disconnect the battery from the vacuum generating system. Charge the battery completely and then disconnect the battery from the charger. Place the pad covers back over the vacuum pads to keep them clean. Release the tilt latch and tilt the pad frame into the horizontal position. Lower the lifter into the box and detach the hoisting equipment from the lift bale. Lower the lift bar to the horizontal position. Reuse the original packing materials to protect the lifter and secure it during transport and storage. Once you have closed the box, your lifter is ready to move to the next job. Be certain that you read, understand and follow the guidance provided in the instruction manual because it includes additional information and warnings. You can download a copy of the instructions for your specific lifter at wpg.com slash service slash product hyphen info hyphen downloads.